Hi, Janelle Schaefer with Sheep Hill Herbs. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to another video. I'm really happy that you're here today. And if you're new, please take a moment to subscribe. Hit the bell button, which will let you know of new videos. Hit the like button and also leave a comment down below. Even if it's just saying hi and letting me know you're here, I will respond to your comments. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a, a, a little bit about rug hooking. It's really a basic beginner's kind of video for rug hooking. And I really encourage you though to have an artistic avenue, an artistic expression. If you're interested in fiber arts, that fiber arts are really satisfying you can use all kinds of colors they're forgiving the fibers are are kind of soft and comforting it's a really nice medium to work in so I hope you enjoy this video I hope it gets you um, interested in learning more about rug hooking okay so in front of me I have a piece that I'm working on and I'm using what's called monk's cloth and monk's cloth um, has, I guess, a spacing that allows the hook to be able to pull through, pull the wool through. It's not super tight, but it's a specific type of cloth. Um, the original rug hookings were done with burlap bags, potato bags. And I, I think that the old hooks were something, you know, fashioned to look something similar to this. If you have a sewing machine, you can stitch around the whole edge. I hand stitch with embroidery floss, but you want to do so because the edge will fray. You can also use linen, and that has like pretty good spacing so that you can pull through uh, the wool strips. So I order my monk's cloth. Currently, I have ordered it on eBay. Then you need a frame. I like this type of frame. Some frames are just like the top and there's no legs and no base, but I really like this the best. I feel like it sits on my lap well. I could have something much bigger than this and I probably will upgrade. But you, uh, this size, which is eight by eight, does not mean I can only make eight by eight pieces. You just rotate what you're working on so that, um, you can, I mean, by adjusting, you can work on something bigger. So here is my, my B. I hand drew this on uh, the monk's cloth with a um, Sharpie marker. And I just did like a basic design. I drew the B in the center and I, I did a flower here. And um, I had like a few layers to the flower. This is kind of like trying to put in some uh, variation and pollen with the yellow but the flower itself was just a very basic one shape on the outside another inside and then a smaller circle in the middle here with this white color the outer edge beyond here is going to just be my background and then I hand drew the square so this doesn't have to be perfect if you need something very perfect or um, exact then um, that might help you. Being an artist and someone who draws well, I guess, you probably do not need as specific of a design and it will get covered up. And I do have, and I'm starting to get more, I'm going to have my own uh, monk's cloth drawn um, templates that can be purchased if you want to start your own uh, rug hooking but you do not feel like you could draw anything I have that on Etsy. Wool I'm using I would say is kind of like thick thicker wool it's thicker than yardage wool which uh, if you have like a fabric store that you can purchase wool where they cut it off the yard it's usually thinner 
but the wool that I have right now, I bought from um, a retired dress dressing coat maker, and he had all these old pieces of scrap, I guess basically you would call scrap, or wool that was cut apart from coats. And I kind of like to go that way because you get some really interesting, unique pieces. I also find um, I really am like an upcycle, recycle kind of person, so I like using... Uh, things that are, um, you know, can be reused. And then like certain fabrics, certain wool fabrics that I purchased from him were thicker than others. This is thicker. This yellow and the blue, these are a little bit thinner. I like the textured effect that I get from using um, either like fuzzy wools or wools that have um, some other kind of texture to them. That's just kind of my style. And I've seen many rug hookers who have a very smooth, really, really small kind of style where their loops are much tighter and much uh, closer. But this is just the way I am. I like bright colors, I like texture. I do not have a wool cutter. I cut my strips by hand. They are about a quarter of an inch thick. They are, um, they're, they're good. <laughs> They're not perfect. They are not as perfect as a wool cutter, but I have a good eyeball for cutting because of um, all the cutting I did in art school. So I'll take this strip here and with my, I have a very good fabric scissors, I will cut the length of it, staying even a quarter of an inch as much as possible the entire way. And then I'll cut um, a few pieces of the color I need at a time and then work and then cut some more. And um, again, keeping in, in line with my kind of style, this like texture driven style, if my pieces are not exactly the same, I'm okay with that. In the end, I feel like it, it makes a nice piece that has um, some interesting elements to so it. This is the tool I use. It has a wood handle and it has a little hook on the end. It's a smooth point. And this is what, I'm a lefty, so this is what you use to poke through the monk's cloth and you pull the loops up from underneath. There is punch needle, which is similar, but you're pushing the wool through, I guess from the underside. I'm not really sure. I haven't done punch needle, but I pull my loops up from down up and then work and keep working to make the pattern. Okay, so I'm gonna take a strip and I'm holding it in my right hand because I'm lefty and I hold it underneath and I push the needle through a space in the monk's cloth and I pull up um, a tail. This is when you start a new piece of wool, you leave a tail and then you're gonna trim that evenly. And you just go through and you pull up a loop and you move over a little bit and pull up a loop. And you do want to get, come up as even as possible with the height of the other loops. And probably someone more experienced than me doing this longer and probably with more um, intent to be perfect with the height will have something more even. Um, I try to go as even as I can, but I do like, you know, and the Impressionists were my favorite artists. I like things that are a little bit less than smooth or perfect. So I'm just moving it across. And I keep having to like kind of tighten and secure the monk's cloth, cloth as I work. So I just want to show you what you do with these like tail pieces. So if I continue with this one strip till it's all used up, I'll have another tail at the end. And what I do is I just take my scissors in and I try to cut as even as possible. And they bl they pretty much blend in when you're finished working. And in fact, I would probably go back through and just clean up some of this a little bit better. Some of these little pieces that are sticking up, I just trim it, trim as I work. Or you can wait to the end and do it all at once. But I like to see the improvement as I'm working. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope that um, you have an interest in 
taking up an artistic venture, maybe rug hooking. If so, leave a comment about it down below and stay tuned for my commercial on my three books that I have on Amazon. Thanks and come again. So before you head out, I want to share with you three books I've self-published. They are listed in the description down below and you can link over. They are on Amazon. So check them out. I have a booklet. This is my all you need to know about making herbal tea. It's a great beginner guide. It is about making herbal tea with leaves and flower parts and it's perfect. It's gonna get you started on herbal teas. Then I also have um, my children's book, The Story of the Gluten-Free Kid. This was written by me and illustrated with the help of my kids and perfect for anybody who has any gluten-free kids. A really fun story that will help them not feel so alone. <laughs> And then the third book is my Mommy and Me Journaling Activities for Love and Serenity and Art Journaling Activities, I should have said. This is um, to be done with an art journal or an art notebook. And it is basically activities. So you have the still life activity, you have the doodle activity, you have, it's called the I am activity. So. My three books on Amazon, link from the description. Help me out. Thanks so much.